baseball season officially has started. Uh, and also during the, the summer, uh, seniors and kids ride free on Smart. And what seniors? I think I can pass. <laughs> I don't think you're passing at all. Sometimes. Don't, don't even worry about it. You have some time. A couple of years. Yeah. But let's go ahead, let's right. call the order, do a roll call. And I know Victoria is joining us as well. She's just running behind also. Okay. All right. Um, Council Member Fleming is will be joining us shortly. Mayor Rogers. Present. And Chair Rogers. Here. Let's go to, cool. yeah, so we're good. Let's go to approval of minutes. There's the March 6th meeting minutes. Uh, are you able to vote on it? All right, we'll come back to that. Let's go I to mean, part. I read it, but I didn't watch it. If you're good to vote on it, I'll just do a public comment. Anybody have any changes to the minutes? Cool, I'll bring it back. And if there's no objections, we'll show them adopted. And then public comment for non-agenda items. Uh, does anybody have a comment today for non-agenda items? Great. We'll go to department reports. Tasha, anything? Um, I just want to remind everyone that Earth Day, um, our Earth Day celebration is happening on the 20th from 12 to 4 in, um, in our square. And we hope everybody can join us for that. And you'll be getting a city council presentation about that more details very soon. All right. Any comments on the department reports? Can you try to get that? I think I asked before, but can we get that in all of our calendars as optional? Do you, so in all the council members calendars, just okay, drop it? Okay, so have it dropped? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll go to 5.1. It's our Sonoma County Regional Climate Protection Authority information briefing on the Bay Energy Bay Run <laughs> program. Come on up. While you guys are getting situated, thank you for being here with us today. We Thanks for having us. Yes. Of course. Thanks for being here. Shoot. I just can start to your screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's first and third Wednesdays of the month. Oh, yeah, no, I fixed both of these. Sorry. Oh, and before they get started, um, I just wanted to put this in your mind to start thinking about as they go through these different programs. Um, there is a water program. Uh, water staff will be working with um, Bayren to look into it as whether or not that's a possibility for implementation for us. But as they go through the other programs too, um, at the end, we'd love to hear your feedback as far as how staff can engage and what programs might work best for us and then how do we engage the community. So we'd love to hear that feedback mm -hmm. from you. That's what we're looking for. So. Great. Well, thank you and good afternoon. My name is Anna Oliva and I am the Bay Area Regional Energy Network or BayRen, local government liaison with SCTA RCPA. Um, and I'm happy to provide you with a briefing on the BayRen program portfolio and the services that are available throughout Sonoma County. Uh, I would also like to introduce Dori Estrella and Christine Condon, who are department analysts for the County of Sonoma's Climate Action and Resiliency Division. Um, and today I'll begin with a brief overview of what Bayron is as an organization and how it's implemented in Sonoma County, followed by an introduction to the 2024 program offerings 
And I'll conclude with some of the services available specifically for local governments um, and some of our outreach and education activities that we have coming up. So Bayron is the Bay Area Regional Energy Network, as I mentioned, and it's a coalition of the nine Bay Area counties. And so this is a network of local governments partnering to promote resource efficiency at the regional level, focusing on energy, water, and greenhouse gas reduction. Barron's led by the Association of Bay Area Governments and offers programs for residents, small businesses, and local governments. These services include outreach and education, training, technical assistance, and funding. Um, and speaking of funding, Barron is funded by utility ratepayer funds through the California Public Utilities Commission, as well as other sources. And its staff is composed of representatives from local governments working to support the local economy and communities and Barron's programs, which include rebates, financing, and technical assistance, are uniform throughout the Bay Area and available at no cost to city and county staff. So a look into what Barron looks like in Sonoma County. So the Regional Climate Protection Authority, or RCPA, is the county lead for Barron's programs. Uh, the County of Sonoma's Climate Action and Resiliency Division, or CARD, as I'll reference it for the rest of the presentation, is contracted by our CPA to manage Barron implementation and outreach, as well as provide technical expertise for the programs. Uh, and additionally, my role as the local government liaison was added to the team in the beginning of this year, and I'll cover more information on these services uh, in, later in the program presentation. Barron is committed to working closely with local governments to promote energy efficiency and resilience in our communities and operates based on these three core principles promoting healthy and energy efficient buildings, building capacity for local governments and reducing emissions by catalyzing regional activities and connecting them to existing initiatives. By 2025, Barron's organization resources and programs will evolve to more intentionally integrate equity, filling gaps and addressing barriers to energy efficiency and electrification as an essential part of meeting state and jurisdiction climate and energy goals. Also, a significant 60% of the forthcoming four-year budget will be allocated to enhance equity initiatives for underserved residents. Uh, and I just want to note that eligibility and determination of what qualifies as an underserved audience varies for each of the Barron programs. Uh, and later in the presentation, I'll do a deeper dive into what that looks like for each of the individual programs. Over the past 10 years, Barron has avoided 156 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions, completed 64,000 housing unit upgrades, created over 12,000 clean energy jobs, and paid 66 million in incentives. Recently, the CPUC has approved a new Barron budget uh, that will underwrite the six existing programs, which include single family, multifamily, commercial, codes and standards, green labeling, and water upgrade save, and introduce four new programs all focused on filling program and policy gaps to address barriers in energy efficiency and electrification. So now I will take a deeper dive in our 2024 program offerings. Uh, as I mentioned, we will now have 10 programs in our portfolio that include four sectors, residential, commercial, and public sector, uh, as well as cross-cutting, uh, which includes one or more sectors. And I will start off with our first program, Single Family Home Plus. I do want to note that this program is currently undergoing a program relaunch. Uh, the program redesign aims to address gaps in the energy program landscape and seeks to better serve underserved audiences. The new target audience of this program includes moderate income households, those with limited English proficiency, and pollution burden households. Program rebates will also be shifting towards energy efficiency and focus specifically on weatherization and remediation. The program will work to complement existing electrification programs such as Tech, IRA, and Golden State. The proposed program will offer whole home upgrades tailored for households unable to otherwise afford them independently. And it consists of two core program elements. First, a comprehensive concierge service, and second, a direct install program. The concierge service will act as a one-stop shop for residents beginning their home upgrade process. Services would include conducting home assessments, connecting customers with appropriate resources and filling out paperwork, and referring folks to other programs if not interested or eligible in Barron services. 
The direct install program will manage the entire installation process for eligible households at little to no cost. And this program would work uh, with the customer on the scope of work and manage contractors throughout the completion of the project. And for households that are already prepared for electrification, referrals will be made and provided to other resources, uh, ensuring improved access to other programs. Um, and I do just wanna make a quick note on where we're at in our redesign process right now. We're currently in the feedback and community engagement phase of the program redesign. Um, we're working to gather this feedback through April and we're gonna use this feedback to shape the program proposal um, and address specific barriers that were addressed during these feedback sessions. Um, we're anticipating that a program proposal will be available by the end of spring. Um, with the anticipated launch being the end of 2024. Uh, there's been a lot of outreach specifically in Sonoma County with the goal of including representatives from our target communities, which include homeowners, contractors, and community-based organizations. Uh, additionally, in the beginning of April, we'd led focus groups with jurisdiction staff uh, to introduce them to the proposed program and gather feedback from them as well. Uh, feedback sessions with homeowners that fall into our target audience will be conducted through the beginning of April. And additionally, we'll be seeking feedback from key CBOs in the community, including LOCN and Goodwill. Uh, but there's still a lot we don't know about what this final program design will look like, um, which includes exactly how many households will aim to serve annually, uh, how this program will serve renters and effectively engage landlords, how long a typical project will take and who the implementers will be. But the feedback gathered during this time will be crucial for shaping that next step um, in our next glimpse at the program design, which is really exciting. Next, I'd like to touch on green labeling. So this program oversees the home energy score offering through Bayron, which provides residents with insights into their home's efficiency potential prior to undertaking home upgrades and provides guidance on next steps to take. Uh, currently, there's a $200 assessment rebate available, and I also want to note that Bayron has been approved to launch the Home Energy Score statewide. The program also provides training and resources for real estate professionals to become green home experts. Um, for Santa Rosa specifically, there's going to be a National Association of Realtors Green Designation Training uh, hosted at the Advanced Energy Center later this month. And to wrap it up for our residential programs, we have the Bay Area Multi-Building Enhancement Program, or BMB, um, which helps home or multifamily property owners make energy saving building upgrades. The program is available to apartment buildings, condos, and HOAs, and offers no cost technical assistance and rebates for building upgrades, which include, but are not limited to, electric heat pump water heaters and HVAC systems, windows and insulation, lighting, appliances, and end unit measures such as smart thermometers, thermostats. Uh, I also wanna note that a case study is currently being developed in Santa Rosa at a Burbank property. Uh, they're in the process of undergoing their upgrades right now, and we'll have more information available in the coming months uh, on that project specifically. Uh, next, we have our codes and standards program, which supports local government specifically with developing, adopting, and implementing energy policies. Uh, this includes REACH codes and California Energy Code. Um, and so no, some of the services for this program include providing training and resources for building staff, supplying no-cost technical assistance to municipal buildings, and organizing quarterly Bay Area regional forums um, on a variety of topics. Uh, for example, the one that we hosted this past quarter was on the uh, water energy nexus. And so we focused on um, water conservation staff, building staff, um, and I personally enjoy them. There are three hours, but the resources are available um, after the forums are held. Next, we have Bayron Business, which offers a valuable opportunity for small businesses to enhance their energy efficiency and reduce operational costs. The target audience for this program is categorized as hard to reach, um, and some of the criteria that determines eligibility for that includes being located in a disadvantaged community, uh, having a primary language other than English, less than 25 employees, uh, and renting the building. 
Uh, however, since this is a small target audience throughout Sonoma County, we work with the local government partnership offered through PG&E and some additional resources through the County of Sonoma to offer energy efficiency assessments, technical support, uh, and connect business owners to other financing options. Uh, however, for those who do um, meet the eligibility for this program, some of the upgrades can include air conditioning, energy star appliances, LED lighting, refrigeration equipment, uh, and space and water heating. Uh, and as Tasha mentioned, we do have water upgrades save. Uh, this program helps homeowners and renters install water and energy efficiency upgrades. Uh, and the program is only available in participating jurisdictions, which means that their utility must be enrolled. And currently in Sonoma County, Sebastopol and Cloverdale are enrolled in the program. Uh, Water Upgrade Save is an inclusive utility investment program that enables customers to install efficiency upgrades while using a proportion of their utility bill savings to pay for the project over time. It removes barriers to participation, such as upfront cost, while providing affordable turnkey installation and quality control service to support bill savings. And the program can easily integrate with existing city programs and expand the city's capacity to reach its resource and equity goals. Uh, in a typical project, this would look like a uh, toilet installation, low flow shower heads and aerators. So if you do have, uh, for example, a toilet rebate that can get folded into the program and just cuts down the overall cost of the project for the customer. And now I'm happy to take a deeper look into our four new programs that we'll be rolling out over the course of 2024. And I will hand it off to Dory and Chris to talk about these programs in a little more detail. Great. I, I do have to say the whole way through, I've been sitting here being like, man, there's a lot of acronyms. And yeah. mm -hmm. uh, clearly people always love when their acronyms create yeah. things. But seeing the refrigerant replacement program being fur, <laughs> yeah. um, I was going to takes the cake. It is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. Thanks, Anna. Yeah. Um, I'm Dory Estrell. I'm an analyst with uh, Climate Action and Resiliency Division. I've been there since 2010, and I manage the implementation of the single family, multifamily, commercial, burr, and green labeling programs. Um, so, Burr, I thought it was Chris who was going to comment to how appropriate the name <laughs> Sorry, is. I didn't mean to so, jump the <laughs> no, no worries. Um, I'm glad you, you noticed that also. To reduce greenhouse gas emissions from existing refrigeration systems, Bayron's Burr program will replace equipment with a high global warming potential or GWP refrigerants with environmentally friendly alternatives at a lower no cost to eligible participants. Burr will serve the Bay Area's food service sector exclusively performing refrigerant changeouts to small restaurants, bars, grocery, store, grocery and convenience stores. Eligible businesses must be independently owned and located in a low income or low food access area or designated disadvantaged community. Next slide, please. Oh, this is me. Um, so this is one of the pu uh, public programs from Bayron, the new ones. Um, I am the codes and standards lead for Bayron for Sonoma County. I'm an energy and sustainability analyst at the county's Climate Action Resiliency Division. Been there since 2017 and um, have a long background in building science, green building and energy consulting. Um, so this uh, program, the targeted decarbonization Decarbonization Services Program is the new um, the new version of the former municipal zero net energy zero net carbon program. It was a technical assistance program that Bayron had. The county took advantage of that program for the Santa Rosa Betts Hall, and um, it was a really powerful uh, program. Really uh, leveraged that project and helped it really get it off the ground. But now the pro these programs are becoming more robust. So this program um, in will include a decarbonization showcase. Um, it'll provide technical and financial support for selected public facility properties. Um, the idea is to serve or uh, identify a select range of buildings that um, encompass different types of buildings, public buildings, and there'll be priority given to buildings that serve um, equity, equitable or equity priority communities. And the projects must be pilot and demonstrate approaches to building decarbonization, 
collect and share real world data. Um, the program will also offer decarbonization, education and financing. And I'm pretty excited about this because it's targeting uh, facility operations staff who traditionally are not that used to electric technologies. And so I think this will be a really powerful program to help move the needle here with public buildings. Um, so it'll allow the um, local government staff to become familiar with decarbonization equipment and financing strategies. And um, the program will also support, support exploring financing alternatives, including leveraging um, alternative financing sources and testing incentives. This is a program that's in development right now. We just finished a um, review of proposals for an, um, a, a bench, a technical bench for these programs. And they just um, I just met the new public program leads today. So um, it's starting to get rolling. It'll take a few months to really develop, but pretty exciting um, kind of, uh, concepts here. Um, so that's the decarbonization services, the TDS, tar targeted decarbonization services. The next is integrated energy services. Um, we have a local government partnership program that we administer in our office. We've um, had the Sonoma County Energy Watch program, the PG&E program in our office since, I don't even remember, I mean, it was before I was there. Um, maybe 2015. 2009. Oh, 2009? Was the LGBT oh, so, and so we've been working on that. It was more of a direct install commercial program and for public buildings for lots of lighting upgrades, things like that. Um, and now the local government partnership is strictly focused on public entities and um, also, oh, actually just recently expanded to commercial properties. So our program, we offer an energy road mapping service that's similar um, to, to what's offered here. And like Anna said, this is a public purpose funded program. So we have to be careful about redundancy. So what we're doing is working in collaboration with Bayron to fill, to make sure that we can take advantage of any resources that we're not already offering in the county, but, and fill gaps. And I kind of fought hard for that. So um, just to be able to bring any of these new resources to the county, but also be able to still serve the county with the local government partnership. Um, so basically these programs will assist local governments and special districts with finding and applying for funds to help improve public buildings. And they'll provide a service to develop roadmaps for public building energy improvements. Um, the, the, uh, Energy road mapping service will be um, will entail te technical engineering assistance to develop the roadmaps for improving the facilities to meet energy goals and provide energy assessments for designated and potential community resiliency centers and technical assistance for energy improvements. Next slide, please. Oh, you're going to climate careers. And we'll, I'll talk to you more a little bit about the um, LGP, the Local Government Partnership Program, because that's um, kind of exciting, too. Um, climate careers. So Sonoma County has actually worked with Rising Sun Center for Opportunity on uh, the Greenhouse Call programs for several years. Um, it's been expanded to now be termed Climate Career Program. And it includes both in-person and greenhouse call, well, green includes greenhouse calls that are both in-person and virtual throughout the Bay Area. In Sonoma County, what that looks like, it's a virtual program this year. Um, interested participants can go online or contact Rising Sun by phone to complete a survey to determine personalized energy efficiency needs and be sent a kit with installation instructions that will be delivered right to their door. Kits include LED bulbs, a smart power strip, high efficiency aerators and shower heads, along with tips on efficiency. To date, the program has served over 1,700 residents in Sonoma County. Great. Uh, next, I wanna to touch on some of the resources uh, outside of the program scope. It's still available for local governments through Bay Run um, in the County of Sonoma. So looking forward into 2024, we're going to see the launch of the Bayren Data Aggregation and Reporting Tool, also DART. Um, and DART will serve as a digital dashboard designed to showcase uh, and share Bayren program metrics at a local level. I um, mean, currently we're in the process of developing county dashboards for this. Um, and we're working with staff to identify um, 
common and useful data that might be able to be pulled for a city council meeting, for example, uh, or a climate action subcommittee meeting. Um, and this tool is gonna to be leveraged by staff to access and utilize crucial data to help inform decision-making and strategic planning. Um, and we're expecting a launch for this uh, later this spring. I also wanna note that Bayron is working on a existing building study. Uh, and the study aims to provide vital data for local governments throughout the Bay Area. And it focuses on uh, understanding the current building stock, understanding uh, and including data on energy usage profiles and building characteristics, as well as infrastructure. And by analyzing this building data, um, we hope to identify DCAR pathways uh, and use this information to direct local governments and actionable insights to craft effective energy policies. Um, and climate goals. Uh, and over the next few months, we'll see the first public version of this dashboard um, with the expected completed dashboard to be available in the end of the year. Uh, and then as of September, 2023, the Bay Run Local Government Liaison role, uh, which is myself, was added to the RCPA team. Uh, and the introduction of the Bayron Local Government Liaison role uh, aims to enhance local government access to Bayron programs and services, ensuring that city and county staff can fully utilize energy efficiency and clean energy resources. The purpose of this role is to bridge the gap between local governments and the Bayron programs by streamlining communication, providing tailored support, and facilitating effective utilization of the resources. Um, and this role includes three key offerings, uh, communication services. And so this can include promoting Bayron activities uh, such as workshop series and trainings, um, as well as up-to-date information for city websites, for example. That's one piece of feedback that we got from staff. It's hard, rebates are constantly evolving and changing as well as programs. Um, so we're helping to assist there. Um, and one thing I do want to note uh, is that this role will also support with climate policy. Um, and so this will help identify areas where Bayron can be leveraged specifically in climate action items. I know you guys are in the process of updating your greenhouse gas reduction strategy. Um, so I'd happy to be partner, uh, partner with staff on that to identify Bayron as a resource for the built environment section. Um, and also identify um, ways to work with city and county staff to understand local equity goals and guide Bayer and program activities accordingly, uh, as well as coordinate and some of the regional partners to stay informed on equity best practices and strategies for effective outreach uh, in the jurisdictions. And now I'll hand it over to Dory and Chris to talk about some of the services available through the County of Sonoma. Great, thanks. So a little history on um, the Climate Action and Resiliency Division. We were actually created in 2006 as the Energy and Sustainability Division. And we were originally um, created to address internal county building energy use. And in 2009, our first public program was introduced. And since then, we've added a number of resources and services. Um, on the energy side of the Climate Action and Resiliency Division, we focus on buildings and behaviors. I do want to add that in 2021, um, the Board of Supervisors created the Climate Action, or the creation of the Climate Action Resiliency Division and merged energy and sustainability together. So now we cover not only buildings and energy, but also lands and waters, and, and it really brings it full circle. So on the energy side of the division, we focus on buildings and behaviors. We assist customers, meaning we, we define our customers as constituents, homeowners, renters, residents in general of Sonoma County, building owners, um, commercial building owners, public facilities, pretty much the gamut. Um, but we, we consider our customers, we even consider buildings our customers, right? Because we have the ability to follow a building through the, you know, no matter who owns it, the life cycle of those improvements that they've made. Um, and we assist those customers through a variety of services. We work with cities, towns, special districts, businesses, and residents to increase energy efficiency in their buildings through project planning for energy retrofit projects and education about rebates and financing. We offer the county's PACE financing program uh, to property owners that now includes what financing for energy, water, solar, battery backup, wildfire safety, and seismic strengthening improvements for both retrofits and new construction. 
Our consultation services provide no cost and partial information to educate community members so they can make informed decisions related to building improvements. We host numerous workshops and trainings for the community and workforce development. And we also partner with a variety of agencies to offer programs and services to the community. So here I'm going to talk about the local government partnership program. Um, what's really great about this program is now it's been expanded to serve small and medium businesses. That's been a large gap in the county. And um, so we can actually provide energy assessments for all of these different types of buildings, um, local government, special districts, K through 12 schools and small and medium businesses. Basically, we, um, our team goes in and evaluates energy use, um, energy using systems and building systems, and um, creates an energy efficiency roadmap. So we document existing conditions, make recommendations, and connect folks with resources. Um, we do focus a lot on decarbonization, but basically we're funded for energy efficiency work. And thank goodness, everything's moving in the direction that we can actually include decarbonization in our, in our work. Um, so we create an energy efficiency roadmap that um, helps folks kind of create a plan um, to identify short, mid, and long-term energy conservation measures and decarbonization strategies. And the end product um, has been used and is can be used for, it's a comprehensive report that can be presented to decision makers. And it's a pretty powerful tool. So it's a high level assessment. It's not an energy, an investment grade audit. However, we can connect folks with an investment grade audit. And we started with that, like with the Santa Rosa Veterans Hall, we're working on all county facilities right now too. But it starts kind of at that level, that high level where you identify opportunities and then you can bring in spend the money on engineering where you can really identify upgrade opportunities and strategies to get projects implemented. Um, I think that's all for this one. And it's no cost, let's just be clear. This is a county public goods funded program. Um, the other thing we do is we provide no cost consultations, um, better building consultations and solar and battery storage consultations. We also offer financing and incentive consultations. I, I work in the better building side and I also dabble in financing and um, incentives and also sometimes in solar and battery storage. But my focus is on um, building upgrades and existing building upgrades. So what we do is we meet with folks and now that we've moved into the Zoom realm, we do it a lot virtually and it's very convenient. We reduce greenhouse gas emissions. People don't have to travel to our office and it just makes it incredibly convenient and really has um, uh, caused a larger uptake on the service. And so we help folks create a project plan, help them move through the complexity from wherever they're at. They can just be thinking about electrification and where do I start? Or they can have some bids they wanna look at and, trans and help them translate bids. We don't help them select a contractor or tell them this is good or this is bad or this is too high or this is too low. It's more like, well, this doesn't include the electrical or you're gonna to have to go get your own permit with this one. Um, and that's hard to do when you're a homeowner or a business owner to understand what's included in a bid and what's not. And so that's a, I think that's a really powerful service. And again, financing incentives. The solar and battery storage consultations are great. We have a colleague who has um, about a decade in the solar industry, and then he's worked for the, our organization for about eight years. And um, he will have somebody send him um, their couple of years of PG&E data, and he'll put it into a tool where he can estimate the size of a system that would offset whatever their goal is. If they want to offset 100%, he'll... Um, calculate what it would take to offset 100% of that usage from the historic um, PG&E data. And he'll look at, um, you know, Google Maps for, uh, to look at suitability for solar. And then also, he'll, he'll also review bids with folks to understand. So the whole point is so that you have a frame of reference and you're not in oversizing a system, which is never optimal. It's never a good idea to oversize a solar system, especially now and because of the um, tariff changes. So it doesn't, it's not cost effective to generate excess and then sell it back to the utility for nothing. So it's better to, on-site use is really key here. That's why battery storage is so critical too. So this proper sizing is um, 
is really what we're after. And then connecting folks with the Sonoma County Energy Independence Program financing for solar. And there aren't incentives for solar, but there are plenty of incentives for heat pump water heaters, heat pump space conditioning. And again, that's a complex landscape. And a lot of those incentives are stackable. And that's really complex. So it's, I think this kind of liaison idea is, is really um, very useful. And um, when, when we have workshops, the uptake really increases. So um, we just, uh, it, it's really been an effective strategy for educating folks. Um, I think, is that all? I think that's mine. All right, there you go. To support the work that we do at the division, we've developed a comprehensive multi-channel outreach plan. An integral component to the plan is education through homeowner-focused in-person workshops, quarterly webinar series, and workforce development trainings for contractors on structural resiliency and the role of energy efficiency and decarbonization. We listed a sampling of the different types of workshops and uh, webinars that, we, that we've done in the past. Since the beginning of the year, we've done um, four, uh, four English version of the in-person workshop and four in Spanish. Um, we've also had the series of six, um, there were six in the webinar series that just concluded last week. One of the webinars that is, is one of the most popular is we do one on solar and storage and electrification, but it's funding your improvements. Um, Anna mentioned that rebates are changing all the time. We do that regularly so we can provide homeowners or anyone that wants to join with the latest information of what's available now, what's coming in the future, how to maximize those rebates and how to really create a project plan to help fund those projects and when know when to get those done. Uh, one of the other tools that we created and for the audience online, uh, we do have a link to our home resilience guide. I did bring some copies for people here. Um, this is a comprehensive tool that we created, educational tool that covers all of the different uh, ways that you can make improvements toward a more resilient, safe, and comfortable home, um, assessing your home, high level overview of it all with some fun graphics. So pretty proud of this. We, yeah, yeah, we like, are. And I yeah. for uh, <laughs> almost a year on, on the creation. So. Harder than you think. <laughs> and if you notice, it's also in and Spanish. And it's in English and Spanish, <laughs> both online yes. and in print. So. And that concludes our presentation. So thank you all for your time. Um, and we welcome any questions. All right. I'll look to my colleagues. Yeah. Apologies for being late. This is a, a presentation that nobody would want to miss. I'm wondering if you went over at the beginning the relationship between JREN and the County of Sonoma, the structure. Did mm -hmm. you cover that ground? We did, but I'm happy to cover it one more time. So. The Regional Climate Protection Authority is the county lead uh, for Bayron, and we do contract directly with the County of Sonoma's Climate Action and Resiliency Division to provide uh, technical expertise for the programs. Chris mentioned she oversees codes and standards, um, and Dory manages our outreach and education for all of the programs. Um, so that's the connection that we have there. Okay, that's um, helpful. I remember. Um, a month or two ago, back at MTC, a uh, number of commissioners were surprised to see that Bay Ren fell under MTC. And so I was just interested to know. So it's, it seems like it's a program that comes out of... It comes out the, of... Uh, the regional planning agency and then the, the local states, the local counties customize it to meet, meet our needs. Yeah. And at a higher level, we do fall under ABAG. Um, so that part of the MTC house there. Okay. Yeah. But you guys are independent RCPA employees. Yeah. Got it. Um, okay. This is this is all really good stuff. Um, I, I do wonder how we can be better partners in helping to disseminate information and resources mm -hmm. here as your city representatives. Yeah, we are happy to pass along some of our outreach materials. Like I mentioned, we have trainings. Dory and Chris mm -hmm. do a great job with the workshop series. Um and for example, like in my role, uh, I coordinate with some of our CACs throughout the counties, like for Sebastopol, they have a very active CAC. And so we partnered with them um, uh, to have a workshop hosted at their cultural community center. It's actually gonna be tomorrow, um, but things along the lines of that um, as well. But just disseminating through already established um, news channels is definitely something we can work with. 
We have a video library mm -hmm. on YouTube, so we're pretty famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am so <laughs> Never, I can autograph. <laughs> I don't want one of you two. Yeah, uh, and then just kind of piggybacking. Can you also talk a little bit about your relationship to Sonoma Clean Power and any work that you might do with SCP? Do you want me to talk about that? Sure. So, so we work very collaboratively with RCPA, CARD, SCP. We'll just use all acronyms. <laughs> Yeah, we, we work collaboratively across programs. We promote their programs. We make sure that we have uniform messaging, which I think is the most important because there's so much information out there. So we coordinate on a quarterly basis. We meet together. Um, we do, they through their lead locally grant, I think our CPA and CARD both had a role in contracting out to provide certain services for them. Um, but yes, we, we get... Um, a lot of referrals from Sonoma Clean Power for our consultations and things like that. So they can go in and touch all of the things at the Advanced Energy Center. And we in turn send people over there. We have a do-it-yourself toolkit that we've created um, in collaboration with, um, and you can check it out at any library. We, we didn't talk about that. We probably should have talked about that because mm -hmm. we're proud of that. Um, it's a collaboration between CARD, the, the Water Agency, Sonoma Clean Power, and the libraries, and you can borrow a toolkit for up to three weeks uh, with energy and water saving information. And again, guidebook printed in both English and Spanish. Nice. It's pretty dynamic, lot, the relationship, too. It's like when, we, when I started in 2017, we had the fires, and then we partnered with Sonoma Clean Power to promote the Advanced Energy Rebuild Program and help people understand how to meet those requirements when they were rebuilding. So it just it kind of works what you know as incentives are changing. Um, we collaborate with them to make sure that we have the most current information. Um, so first, it sounds like Baron did a great job um, with the investment for the local government liaison. <laughs> Sounds like they did a good job on that one. But I did have a question about uh, getting feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you mentioned uh, Goodwill, I believe, and Locean. Mm -hmm. Why those two and not other? There's others also. Those are others that, that we've reached out to. So Locean, I work directly with them. It's They have a big reach into the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. um, so working through them and they cover youth, you know, for also. So it's, it's, it's a good partnership there. Goodwill Industries, um, I, they have a really good workforce development program. And so coordination through theirs and a, and a good client perspective. And, and again, we're focusing on equity and Goodwill's purposes, you know, their, their funding and, and their focus is a lot towards the, you know, equitable. So are you open to working with other agencies? Oh, absolutely. Just the two that you're working with? No, currently? absolutely. Okay. Um, and would love your suggestions on, on others to reach out to. Perfect. Um, also, I was, uh, you wanted to know like what programs, I, I love all the programs. I'm happy that Water is um, going to start looking into um, the program that they have, but I think all of them really could be beneficial um, to our residents and our, our businesses and supporting and helping them. Um, so do I get to choose like two? Well, I, <laughs> it, it, was, it was really like, what seems to stand out to you? Um, there are some programs that have been going on for a little while mm -hmm. and they have had the water, a water version of the water program mm -hmm. and some new changes have just taken place. So we're going to look at whether or not that's a fit that'll yeah. work for us now. Um, I think one of the things that I am looking to you all is, so what are some of your ideas about the different partnerships and avenues in which we can utilize to get the information out? If you have some mm -hmm. thoughts about that. Um, and of course, if there's some programs that stand out um, more than others or want to pursue really staff will, our staff will work with other departments and planning and wherever is appropriate to see what programs work best but then 
So I drew little hearts. So I'll show you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my hearts are. Okay. So uh, they are in business. I'm not sure if we're uh, doing anything with that program, but I think that it sounds great. And although the population may be small, I think it's a great population um, to reach out to, to see um, how we can support. Um, of course, uh, water upgrades, I think we're doing a great job, but if there is anything that we can do to, um, to continue to help our, our constituents, that would also be great. And then uh, the refrigerant replacement program, I'll say that uh, I have two refrigerators because I have a large family, but someone came out to look at my house and they're like, that refrigerator is using all your energy. And I'm like, got to get rid of that. Right. So this recently happened. And, and I just thought that that was like really great to have, to have that program. So um, the Burr, Burr. Uh, sounds like a, a great program. Uh, targeted decarbonization services, um, the testing incentive, um, and the leveraging of grants. So just empowering people to kind of be in charge of what they're doing, I thought um, was great. I, I have a lot of hearts because you guys said a lot of things that I thought was like really cool. So, um, but I think as far as our programs are concerned, um, those are the ones that really stuck out to me that I, I like, but I enjoyed hearing about all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No, do you, they, do you need that feedback or is it? We're just kind of looking for feedback as far as staff and next directions and sort of areas yeah. of focus and opportunities for outreach. And um, as you had mentioned too, um, looking at where we're already doing something yeah. and then picking back, picking back, piggybacking on that yeah. kind of a thing yeah. for getting the information out to the community. So ideas of where you can think of that you've worked with different programs that some of this information could right. be really presented to the audience. Well, yeah. I, I would just add that um, last thing, and I'll turn it over to you, Chair, is that anywhere where we're getting a really good bang for our buck um, is, I think, the, the, you know, especially as we look at probably some difficult budget cycles. So by that, I, I look at the buck being two different things. One is our greenhouse gas buck. So, you know, what, what for staff time and, and taxpayer dollars are we getting the most reduction? And then from like an equity lens, where are we reaching folks who might not otherwise have access to information? And so those two bucks, I think if you can, um, if you were had to cut programs or had to enhance programs, depending on whether you have a surplus or a deficit, that's that's the way that I would personally go about it. Um, that and also being mindful of existing infrastructure and not wanting to have to dismantle and then reassemble programs over time. But it sounds like you all know what you're, what you're doing pretty well. Yeah, I was going to say something similar that you know, I've had a dozen meetings in the last two days where every single one on the central theme was most local government budgets are going to be completely constrained for the next couple of years. So how can you either create packages that make it easier for folks to be able to do this for particularly local government programs, or how do you partner with people who are going to have funding, which is why I asked the question about Sonoma Clean Power, that has their rate payers that are built in and they have their programs and their, their charge that uh, aligns perfectly with what our CPA is doing and what Bayron is doing and all of those sorts of uh, focuses. Let's go to public comment on the item. Do you have anything you want to add? No, I think the team did a great job. Sounds okay. good. Yeah. <laughs> focus eye, where it's more than one focus. Yeah, foci. Foci. <laughs> Tommy has many foci. <laughs> All right, I'll bring it back then. And just thank you so much for taking the time uh, and being here. And I think it'd be helpful, you know, we'll be able to report out on this to our colleagues be able to put things on social media, but I think really it will be helpful when uh, there's specific uh, workshops or things that we can help highlight, uh, whether it's through the city connections or through uh, our own personal networks as well. Um, I think that'd be great. And then one more suggestion is just my, the way I view Santa Rosa is that it's a city made up of a whole bunch of pockets. 
yeah. and you have some fairly strong uh, neighborhood associations, um, particularly the JC, the West End, that getting in front of some of those folks and talking about programs that are available is uh, to me an oftentimes untapped resource. They've done the work of organizing the people uh, and just getting in front of them uh, can have an impact. So it might be something worth thinking about. Yeah, there is. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? All right. All Thank right. you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, so we don't have the meeting on. Yeah, so we've got our yeah. future agenda items. Uh, I'll let folks take a look at that if they want. Uh, as the mayor just reminded me, we do not have a meeting in May. Uh, partially, that allows us to then recoup or uh, recover after uh, budget season and talk about how we've allocated city priorities and resources and staff time. Uh, but we'll get back to it after that. June 5th. Yep, June 5th. Yes, so June 5th. Um, what we have on the calendar now is the GHD reduction strategy uh, presentation. And then also uh, July 3rd will be canceled due to the holiday. Yep, that's right. Oh, that we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. It's party time.